Hey, welcome to Two Guys Garage. Yeah, man. Check it out, our XJ Wrangler here. A couple little upgrades before hitting the trail this weekend. Uh-huh. Yeah. We also have a car that I'm this close to buying. It's a 55 Nomad, and I'm kind of up in the air. So we're gonna walk you guys through some steps when it comes to shopping for a new hot rod. Yeah, what to look for. It's gonna be fun. You guys stick around. Now you know we're all about horsepower around here, but when you're out on the trail, it starts getting dark. You need good eyes, you need good vision, good lighting. Now check this out. This is what you call wrinkles. Now this is age, you know, you got sun damage, you're starting to reduce your lumens. So you're gonna hit that pothole, bounce off a rock that you don't want to. So we're gonna do some upgrading. Now this is Sylvania, this is their Zevo. Now this is a street legal LED lighting system. You know about LEDs, they last forever. So yeah. super long life. You're gonna get you know, further projection, broader light, and it's a daylight, kind of a bright white. So it's gonna be nice, an upgraded system. Yeah, man, same thing on the fog lights. Real nice plug and plays from Zevo. It's their four inch street legal fog light. Great thing is these guys match the color temperature a lot daytime running LEDs, so it's nice. Man, these things are so bright, they'll make you squint behind them. Uh, and again, plug and play, the thing pops right in there. I'll show you, really simple, really easy, just take out these old guys and again some of that same sort of stuff going on in the lens and pop these guys right in just like this all right now check this out this is really simple a little torx bit from our little stall willy kit a couple of screws here on this little trim ring and with that this trim ring comes off pretty much the light falls out and you can pop the plug right off and with that it's plug and play you got a little adapter so this new unit will fit anywhere where you've got a seven inch sealed beam or halogen. And with that, I can plug the new one in. And within just a couple minutes, we've got some nice bright light. Now these are the Zevo kit from Sylvania. Now this is the strip kit. Now you can get the stage one. So that sets you up with a 12 volt. You can stick in the cigarette lighter or you can hardwire it. Now you can start adding extensions, six inches, 12 inches. Cause what you get is basically that ambient lighting like you see in all these new vehicles. So all I gotta do, it's a high bond sort of adhesive strip here. I peel that off. I find a good spot under the dash. Maybe I stick it up along the rails, on the roof. So anywhere you want, I can extend it up to 20 feet. Now I tuck my wires away and I'm ready to kick off the party. All right, man, check it out. Disco ball, pew, engage. Yeah. Now, literally, you have 16 different colors, five different modes, and you control it all by this wireless remote. So you have true RGB mixing technology right here at your fingertips, man. It's, it's, it's kind of cool, it's, yeah. Yeah, man, so in case you want party mode or you just want the practicality of the ambient light. Let's say you're looking for your gear, right? You drop your cell phone, maybe your makeup. You can see makeup. it, you got good access. Makeup? Well, you know, somebody out there, I'm right. sure. Oh, all right, all right. Um, well, look, it's easy to install, no problems at all, man. Peel, stick, you're on it. Yeah, we got the headlights done, nice and bright. Yeah. But we're gonna take a break when we come back. It's full on nomad action, man. Mm -hmm. I'm this close to buying one, man. We'll give you the whole rundown of the car next. Rust and corrosion can immobilize parts and get in the way of repairs and disassembly of your vehicle. Use PB Blaster to bust up the rust instead of busting your knuckles. PB Blaster is a penetrating catalyst. Its capillary action allows it to break loose surface tension rust by creeping into the smallest cavities to free stuck parts quickly, making your work easier. Just saturate the rusted surface with PB Blaster and allow a few minutes for it to penetrate the corrosion. Then lightly tap to clear rust away. PB Blaster leaves behind a thin, non-evaporating layer of oil to help lubricate parts and displace moisture, preventing parts from rusting over again and saving you time and money down the road. This tip is brought to you by the Blaster Corporation, makers of PB Blaster, the number one selling penetrant for breaking free rusted parts. Now, would you believe the Nomad was originally a 1954 Corvette prototype? It debuted at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York City for the General Motors Motorama. 
It was such a huge success that some of its features were actually applied to the Chevy Bel Air two-door station wagon. In 1955, Chevrolet put this model into production as the Nomad, producing 8,530 in the Nomad's inaugural year. Along with its ribbed roof and tailgate, their slanted B-pillars, you can spot the 55 Nomad by its unique headlight eyebrows, the fender and door spears, and the waffle pattern interior design. This moment in history is brought to you by Federated Auto Parts. Yeah! Nice, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Cool. Hey, welcome back. Willie just rolled in a 1955 Bel Air Nomad wagon. Man. We're checking out the pictures, trying to zoom in and look at stuff. But... Yeah, I'll tell you this. When I saw the picture, I was pretty excited. When I saw the car, I was like, ooh, it's, Reality a little, set in. it's a little rougher. Here's the deal. I'm thinking about picking up this Nomad. You know I've wanted one for a long time. Right now, he's got a 24K price tag on it. Spendy. Yeah, no, these things came with, what, 265 cubic inch motors, yeah. so not real powerful, no. so there are probably a lot of engine swaps out there. There's a lot of restorations because they're so old, so there's a lot yeah. of things to look for, you know, when we're looking at this thing. Yeah, and that's what we plan on doing, man, is dive into this car, see if it's worthy of me purchasing it, and give you some tips on how to shop for your next hot rod. Yeah, so we're going to grab some tools, get this thing on the lift, start diving in. All right. Well, I've got pulse, but I've got a really bad paint job. So maybe this will come in handy later on, but you can see right up here, we've got some checking going on, some cracks. And that's going on pretty much everywhere across this car. I've got big cracks here. And if I look down here, you really get down and you kind of look at the light. I've got a lot of, I mean, tiny little blistering and things going on. It looks like trash in the paint, but it's more likely the lacquer underneath whatever's been sprayed on top coming through. So the entire paint job on this thing, although from you know, 25, 50 feet away, looks great. Up close, it's dead. It's gonna have to pretty much go down to metal. So that's, that's a huge decision point. Do I want something to look good for a while or am I ready to do a restoration? I've got some scratches. Now light scratches, you can probably polish out, but heavy scratches, you're either gonna live with or you're gonna have to find glass. Now, sometimes it's hard to find glass depending on the car. This chrome piece right here fits pretty good. But as I get over here, it sort of sticks out. I've got a pretty big gap. So if I follow that along and I do a little CSI, right, this door is starting to look pretty funky. I've got a huge ledge here, fits okay, and then a high spot. So either this door's been hit, maybe the front end, or what looks like there might be some funny action going on in the quarter panel. Okay, kind of alluding to what Kevin was saying, at the front of the car, you see signs of the very same in the back, either an impact or a lot of rust and somebody did a repatch. Now here you see a weld or some sort of seam here coming through, another seam right here. And this, if you do the old knock test for Bondo, you can hear that's metal, but you get down in here more of the thug and you get to feeling a lot of Bondo. You can detect that just by a simple big difference there. There's a lot of places online that have different articles and so forth. We go to MyClassicGarage.com. The reason being, not only are there tech articles, there's forums, there's guys mid-process of restoration just like this, regardless of how rare the car is. But there's also places and companies that you can go there and get new quarter panels, new interior parts, new fenders, and so forth. So check it out if you're in the process of a restoration. MyClassicGarage.com. It'll help us find a lot of these hard-to-get parts. I think the next step for us to do really, now that we know what's going on on the outside of this car, is to get under the hood, right? See if there's anything that lights our fuse right there, since we know what we're dealing with on the outside. Now the paint and the body might have been a little bit rough, but there's a lot of great work under the hood, so that's a positive sign. Yeah. So we've got sort of a new crate motor in here, so modern, probably 350, so it looks like a ZZ4 motor. Nice. Right? A lot of new stuff with it, headers wires, right, ignition system. So even the AC, all the lines look brand new. I mean, that's, that's good stuff. Now we're gonna do an overall inspection of the health of this motor. That means pulling the plug, which I believe you got right there. Yeah. How'd that look? Well, it looks pretty fresh. So we're hoping this thing has pretty low miles on it and yeah. good compression. Yeah, we're gonna do a compression check. Now when we come back, that's a great way to tell you basically the overall health of the motor, how those cylinders are firing, how they're sealing up and so forth. Yeah, so we're gonna take a break. When we come back, it's gonna keep on diving in. Yeah. This segment of Two Guys Garage is brought to you by Woodward Fab, quality metalworking equipment since 1966. Hey, welcome back. Now we've got our 55 Chevy Nomad. Mm. Willie's got K 
cash in his pocket, <laughs> burn a hole. He's thinking about buying this thing, but yeah. we want to check it out first. Amen. Yeah. And that means checking out the health of the motor. One of the great ways to do that is with a compression test. Yeah, because we all know you need three things, compression, fuel, and spark. So compression is important because it's one of the most expensive and hardest things if it's not there. Yeah. So we're going to see how much pressure our cylinders can make when we turn the engine over. Now, a couple things you want to do before you actually start doing that compression test. You want to unhook the ignition, okay? If you have fuel injection, all right, you want to unplug those injectors as well. We've removed all the plugs. We've threaded our hose to the compression line inside that spark plug hose, and we take it from each cylinder and test the compression of each cylinder. Now, I've got a simple piece of paper labeled one through eight. We'll jot down the numbers that it gives us. What you're looking for is big fluctuation in those numbers. All right, man, we got about 215. That's, nice. that's a That's a pretty strong. good number, yeah. I can release the pressure here. We can move on. Now, what you're looking for is there's no like pass or fail number. You know, a manufacturer might give you a range, which is good. So that you want them all to be about the same. So what you're looking for is a low flyer, you know, or multiple low flyers. So you're seeing 215, 210, 27, 220, and then you get a 160, 120. You know you probably got a problem in that cylinder. Now it's going to change depending on you know compression ratio of the engine. Even your cam can change this number. So again, it's all about consistency. So we're going to run through, do all eight, see what we got. Hey, being able to say you're a certified mechanic really means something to the people, especially when they're handing you the keys to the car. But before you can slap that badge on your shoulder, you have to pass the test. Now, an ASC certification requires a few things. Number one, you have to have relevant work experience. Number two, you have to pass one or more of the exams. And number three, you have to go back and get certified every five years. Now, the good news is you can go back and get certified whenever you're ready because ASC testing is available all year long. There are 49 different certification exams covering every area of automotive service, from maintenance and light repair to hybrid and electric vehicles. Each exam generally consists of 40 to 70 multiple choice questions, focusing on practical problems that you'd face in a day-to-day -day work environment. Now look, there's no big secret on how to do well in an ASC certification test. It all starts with your technical knowledge. But ASC also provides some online tools to help you get prepared. You can take an ASC practice test, which is half the length of the regular exam and provides a performance report with explanations for both the correct and incorrect answers. That way, you can kind of see what areas you need to study up on. All right, here's an example of some of the questions you might actually find on the test. We snatched this one right off the practice exam. It has to do with light trucks and automobiles. It actually has to do with a lot of what we're dealing with in the shop today. A compression test shows that one cylinder is too low. A leakage test on that cylinder shows that there is too much leakage. So during the test, air could be heard coming from the tailpipe. Which of these could be the cause? A, broken piston rings. B, a bad head gasket. C, a bad exhaust gasket. Or D, an exhaust valve not seating. The correct answer is D. Look, you got it right. The exhaust valve isn't seating. We know this because if the exhaust valve were seated, it should be airtight. So if air is getting past the valve and the valve is in the closed position, there's a problem either with the seat or the valve. We know it's an exhaust valve instead of an intake valve because air is leaking out of the exhaust pipe. Now, if you feel like you need to brush up on areas like this, ASC has study guides online to help you with individual test series. The study guides include more sample questions, training resources, and details to help you get more familiar with the test material. So get registered, get to studying, and get your ASC certification. This ASC information brought to you by Federated Auto Parts. This is the Lang Wireless Amp and Voltmeter. This is the tool that you'll actually use with your smartphone or tablet to wirelessly measure and test your volts and amps. Normally you have to get a friend to come over and sit in the driver's seat and turn things on and off while you read the meter. But since this is wireless, you can sit in the driver's seat and run all the tests you want, getting the readouts on your device. You can use the interchangeable amp clamps to measure your start or charge currents or any parasitic current draw. It also has a wireless voltage test capability, so you can monitor any voltage drops while you work around the car and turn different items on or off. 
The fast capture feature shows voltage peaks or drops as short as one millisecond, so you'll catch the glitches that would normally be too fast for you to see. This is the one tool that's going to speed up the problem solving process and get you back out on the road. From Ranger Products, check out this quick jack portable lifting system. This is the perfect tool for do-it-yourselfers, racers, or people who don't have the resources or space for a full-size lift. Its low 3-inch height fits under most cars or light trucks, and it's fully portable with built-in wheels so you can roll it around. The quick jack system is hydraulic, and it's available in 3,500-pound or 5,000-pound capacity. It has two different power options as well, regular 110-volt or 12-volt DC battery. Push the button on the remote control, and in less than a minute, your car's in the air. A built-in flow divider keeps the jack frames level during use, and these cool quick-connect hoses make it a breeze to set up. And it has rugged safety lock bars to securely hold your vehicle, making those trackside or DIY jobs easier and safer. This is the blower pulley drive bolt kit from ARP. When you're replacing nuts and bolts, you want to make sure your hardware isn't going to rust over time. Not only does rust compromise the bolt's integrity, but it also takes away from the look of your vehicle. These kits are high strength stainless steel, and they actually are much stronger than grade eight. Plus, they won't even rust in the harshest environments. The bolts are rolled after heat, greatly increasing the strength and fatigue life. All ARP stainless steel comes highly polished. These kits are available in hex or 12 point, and you can also get them in different lengths. All the kits include stainless steel washers, so you have all the parts you need in one package. ARP Automotive Racing Products makes these kits easy to install, so you can swap out your commercial grade hardware with ARP stainless steel for instant gratification. All right, we made some good progress on our motor with our compression test. And you can see all the numbers are really good and really tight. So it means the motor is running pretty strong and it's pretty fresh. Yeah. But for you guys at home, if you were to get a low baller or two, you can go a little bit further with the leak down test. Yeah, I mean, a leak down test is really going to tell you what part of the cylinder is failing. All right, whether it's valves, rings, and so forth. Now, here's how it works, okay? We put it at the top dead center. We chose the easiest cylinder we could, number one, okay? And again, we got a top dead center, got our little hose in here. Basically, just do this. All right, so this is the air coming in. I'm gonna do a quick adjustment. Make sure it's at 100 right there. It is, lock it down. And you can see this cylinder is only leaking about 5%, man. That is really good. That's tight. So yeah. we know this is a pretty fresh crate motor and that's a great sign. Yeah, that's man. some cash we're not spending. Exactly. And another good trick, if you're gonna do a leak down test, is mark the harmonic balancer. And normally, about every 90 degrees, you'll see a little indicator. And that way you could follow the firing order on a small block Chevy 18436572. Makes doing a leak down test really easy. Yeah, now we go over to whiteboard. We'll show you a little bit about what's actually going on in there and you know how to read that gauge so it's not just a number it's got some meaning to you so come on over here now we drew the engine out here so this is more of a, a four valve it you know cylinder head setup so just a little easier we've got an intake with a valve an exhaust with a valve right we got our piston here now we said set it at top dead center so if you think about it if I'm gonna pressurize this cylinder through the spark plug hole and if my piston and rod are just a little bit cocked over here and I pressurize it boom it's just gonna push right down. So that's why you gotta get it pretty close to TDC. But once you're there, now you're listening for where that air is going. You're leaking. So Willie can go to the exhaust and he can listen, put a stethoscope on there and see if I've got a rushing going on past my exhaust valve that should be closed. I can go to the carburetor side or intake and do the same thing. So I could be leaking past the valves. That might be, you know, worn out guides. So I've got slop, worn out seats, anything in that sealing system. Now the other way I can look is I'm blowing past my rings. Now I've got a ring end gap, so don't let that fool you a little bit. That's a little bit of leakage, but it's controlled. But if I've got a lot, I can pull a dipstick and I can hear leakage going in the crankcase. Now the other thing you can do is you can leak right past the head gasket and go into maybe the water jack. So if you pull the radiator cap, look for bubbles coming out, that's where all that leakage could possibly be going. So we're gonna go through some of the other cylinders, you know, if we had a bad motor, but this one's looking pretty good. So we're gonna take a break. When we come back, we're gonna get underneath that car and see what other kind of dirty things we can find. For more information about anything you've seen in today's show, check out mavtv.com or visit our website at twoguysgarage.com. All right, welcome back. 
Here's the moment of truth, man. We got it up on the lift. Now understand, we've done a full kind of inspection of the body. We got to check out the motor, and the body had me a little bit worried, a little discouraged, yeah. but the motor, hey, couple dude, thumbs up. That thing was strong. That thing's yeah. ready to go, dude. Yeah, man. So you're what, like 50-50 right now? I'm about, you know, I like the car. There's no joke. I've ordered one of these for about a year and a half now, so right now everything seems eh, pretty good. But again, this is the moment that we've all been waiting for, okay? Right, let's get out the inspection yeah. devices, the flashlights and whatnot. Yeah, brakes over here look pretty good. The rotor's brand new, so yeah. definitely a lot of work in this front end. Now, I see some exhaust work from these new headers, and it's pretty boogery up here, but you know what? It doesn't have yeah. to look pretty. As long as it holds the gas, it doesn't leak. Check out this drive shaft, man. I mean, I don't know if the angles change by how they installed the motor and the trans, yeah. but. We've got a little bit of adjustment here. We're dragging on the whole parking brake linkage here, but that's easily fixable. Uh-oh, here's a showstopper here. Uh-oh. Oh, we got a lot of frame rust. Whoa, a lot of frame Ooh, rust up in here. Man. Ooh, that's not good at all. You follow the trail? How far up that way does it go? Um, the whole frame oh. rail itself is rusted, and I haven't... Oh, no. Oh, man. oh no. Are you kidding me, dude? Look at the rust. Is that fiberglass? Dude, that is fiberglass mesh. Did they really try to make a oh. frame rail out of fiberglass? Dude. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I'm so bummed on this car, man. I was hoping it was going to be the one. It's like a, it's like a no, no, no mad for Willie. <laughs> yeah, so I'm taking it. That's off the list. Yeah, it's definitely 100% off the list, man. Hopefully you guys learned some tips and some tricks to look for when you're out car shopping. We are a hot rod hunting, right? Unfortunately, this one just had too much decay for us to deal with, man. Yeah, just but the cool up. thing is it can be down on one side, but it can be fun on the other side. So good luck to you guys. Yeah. In the meantime, we'll see you next time. Dude, I'm so bummed on that, man. I wanted that to be the car. Two Guys Garage is brought to you in part by Federated Auto Parts. Best parts, best people, best service. Vehicle transportation provided by Pilot Transport. Auto hauling specialists. Professional POV cameras provided by Replay. Record. Replay.